In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can get into an untapped market. Australia, mate! So Australia dropshipping right now is insanely hot and it's only going up. Right now, Australia is a 100% untapped market, meaning there's not a lot of competition on there. Yeah, there's a few people that are actually dropshipping on there, but not as many as there are in other parts of the world. So that presents you with a perfect opportunity to get started and essentially build your Australian empire. So today's video is gonna be focused on how you can get started dropshipping in Australia on eBay. So first things first, as always, to go along with this video and help you out on your journey and getting started, I'm gonna have an easy to reference cheat sheet with everything that I'm going over in today's video. And if you want access to that, just go ahead and drop a comment down below with the hashtag eBay Australia. And let me know what your takeaways from this video. Once I see that you went ahead and did that, I'll reply back with a link to the sheet. All right, let's get started. Now for today's video, we are gonna be focusing on eBay and Australia. So what this means is that everything that we're gonna be doing is gonna be specific for the Australian demographic. We're not gonna be targeting anything outside of that. So because of that, we're gonna be using the eBay Australia website and we're gonna make sure that when we look for our suppliers, they're all gonna be from Australia or at least they're gonna ship to Australia. All right, mates, so now to one of the most burning questions. Is it actually legal to dropship in Australia? Well, to put it bluntly, yeah, 100%. Dropshipping itself is completely legal, but that doesn't mean that there are some things that could be considered illegal. Now, this being the case, there are a few things that, you know, you shouldn't be dropshipping because they can land you in some legal troubles or in some hot water. Some stuff that honestly is just better left untouched and undropshipped. And I'm talking about certain categories, like let's say copyrighted items, anything that's copyright, anything that's branded, anything that's a knockoff, stay away. eBay will start taking down your listings and ultimately shut down your shop. Besides that, a few other things that can be considered illegal or not appropriate for drop shipping are going to be things like adult products, products that can be potentially harmful to people, and things like certain types of supplements that you really shouldn't be selling in the first place because when it comes to supplements, these are things that people ingest and they actually have certain expectations for what these things are going to do or what these supplements are going to do to them. So it's better to just not touch these kinds of things because they could potentially sometimes have some bad side effects. But to answer the question, dropshipping itself is 100% legal with the exception of a few things that are just better left untouched again. Now, a few things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to dropshipping in Australia or dropshipping anywhere for that matter is going to be taxes. So we were just talking about the legality of copyright stuff. So it's kind of natural to just go into the legality of just overall finances. So you do need to go ahead and collect taxes and you also need to pay your income taxes. Now, these are going to be things that are going to be specific to where you're dropshipping to and where you're dropshipping from. So the first thing you're going to need to take into consideration is going to be the sales taxes. Now, luckily for us, eBay actually does this for us. So when they collect the payment from our customers, they're also going to be collecting the sales tax. So that's not something that we really have to worry about, but we do have to worry about our income tax. So at the end of the day, or at the end of the year, rather, we need to go ahead and file our taxes and report everything that we made. Now, this is going to be specific for where you're drop shipping from. So where do you live? Your income taxes are going to be based on that. So my suggestion to you is to just look into the local laws and make sure that you are up to date and adhering to any and all of your local laws. All right, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started with the real action. Let's go ahead and start setting up our account for eBay Australia. Now for this, we're not going to go to eBay.com. Remember, we're going to be dropshipping in Australia. So the link is going to be completely different. And if you want that link, just go ahead and check out the cheat sheet. It's all going to be there for you. So for this, what we're going to do is simply go to signup.ebay.com slash AU for Australia. And we're going to go ahead and start filling out our information. Now for this, I'm just going to go with a personal account. We're not going to do a business account just yet. We're going to start easy and we're going to start free. So we're going to go ahead and fill this out. All right, next, once you have the first part filled out, you're gonna have to fill in your Australian phone number. Now, I don't have an Australian phone number, so that's okay. You don't necessarily have to have an Australian phone number. Just go ahead and click the little flag and choose the one that you have. Now, after you go ahead and verify your phone number, just go ahead and continue. And that's pretty much it. You're fully signed up and ready to go. Now, the next thing that we need to do is go ahead up here and click on the sell button. After we do that, we're gonna go ahead and land on this page. Then we can actually go ahead and start creating our listings. So our first listing, we can go ahead and just simply click on list for free. And now we need to figure out what we're gonna drop ship. So at this point, 
we need to start figuring out who our suppliers are going to be and what our products are going to be. Now, eBay, eBay tends to be a numbers game. So the more that you can upload, the better, the more chances that you're going to have of being found and potentially making sales. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't also try niching down and just making a particular style store. Either way can go, but just try to upload as many relevant products as you can. Now, to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is simply navigate to AliExpress.com. Now, once we're on here, we're going to go ahead and sign in. Now, if you don't have a login account, then you can just go ahead and easily create one. It only takes a few minutes, but even then you don't necessarily have to do it just yet. But just so you know, it makes things a lot easier. But besides that, what we need to do is once we're on the actual website, once we're on the AliExpress website is we need to go up here and change this ship to. Right now I have it at Canada because I was just making a video on Canadian dropshipping, which if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future notifications for when that video comes out. But what we're gonna do here is simply look for Australia. Then our language we're gonna keep at English, but currency I'm gonna keep at US dollar because it's gonna make it easier for me to be able to know how much I'm spending for these products. Now we're gonna simply go ahead and click on save and that's it. Everything that comes up for us now is gonna be eligible to be shipped to Australia. Now, how do we choose what products we're gonna drop ship? Well, we need to start doing some product research. And in order to do product research, we need to have a bit of information. For one, we need to see what's trending. So there's gonna be a few different ways that we can do this. First off, we can simply navigate to TikTok and simply look up the hashtag TikTok made me buy it. These are gonna be the most popular products that are currently trending and being posted on TikTok, but this is gonna give us a lot of different products in a ton of different niches. So if there's something that you're looking for in particular, let's say you wanna drop ship pet supplies, then simply just go ahead and add that as well, pets. And you're gonna see that all of the different products changed to be specific for the pets niche or for a pet category. So everything on here is gonna be related to animals or pets. Besides that, another thing that you can do is simply check out the best seller section on places like Alibaba, AliExpress, Amazon, and that's gonna tell you what people are currently looking for and what people are currently purchasing. So for this, all you really have to do is simply go up here and you can click on choice. So on this, you're gonna find a few different styles of products, a few different products that are currently trending and people are actually purchasing. Besides that, the other thing that you can do is simply go up here where you have your account information and go to the DS Center. The DS Center is the dropship center where you're also gonna to get tons of products that are also currently moving. So once everything pops up for you, then you're gonna see all of the products that people are actually buying on AliExpress. So you can go ahead and check out these shoe bags. They're running for about 16 bucks. They have 4.8 stars and you can see that over a thousand have sold. Not just that, but in the last seven days, they've actually been selling about 52% more than previous. So the information that you get on here can help you make a decision on whether or not some of these products are actually worth drop shipping. Now, let's say I wanna drop ship this pet bowl and I wanna import this to my store and I wanna start selling it on my eBay store. So we already have it ready on our eBay dashboard where we can start listing our product but we need to actually start downloading all of these different images, all of the variations, copying over the titles, the descriptions, everything. So what we're gonna do is, you can't really save it from up here, but what you, what you can do is go down here and look at the description. From here, you can start saving all of the different images. So you like this one, just go ahead and save that. Then same thing with these, go ahead and save these. You're also gonna have to go ahead and take note of all of these different variations. Make sure you check out the pricing so that way you can price yours appropriately and copy over the description. And you're gonna have to keep going back and forth while you're pasting everything to eBay. So now let's just start with a regular dog bowl. It's none of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue without a match. We're gonna do a new one, never used, or brand new, either or will work. And then before we continue any further, it's actually gonna ask us for a bit of information. So for this, let's just go ahead and quickly go through this. So let's provide our contact info. So I'm gonna tell them that I am dropshipping from the United States. I'm gonna give them my address. All right, so let's go ahead and provide our contact info. It's gonna quickly ask us to verify once more. Now, once we're on this page, this is where we're gonna have to go ahead and start uploading all of our different product images, copying over the title, same thing goes for all of the different additional details if they're required, copying over the description, setting up our pricing. Are we going to do auction? Are we going to do buy it now? And everything else. So this in itself, it's it's fairly quick. It'll probably take us maybe 10, 5 to 10 minutes to fill out one entire one of these and then continue on to the next one. Now, while that doesn't seem that bad, think about it this way. I mentioned earlier that eBay is a numbers game, right? So that means this is going to take us 
maybe a few hours actually to do a couple of different products so let's say we have 10 different products to upload we might be in front of our computer doing the same thing over and over for about an hour and a half to two hours and honestly our time would be way better spent somewhere else doing something else optimizing something else or doing more product research so what we're going to do is instead of doing everything manually we're going to import everything automatically we're going to use automation now before we get to that we are going to have to do one quick step prior which we would typically do after we upload our first listing manually but since we're not going to do that we're going to go ahead and do the automated version we actually need to set our policies beforehand so doing this is really easy if you want the link that's going to take you directly to the page just check out the cheat sheet it's all going to be in there for you and this is the page that we're going to land on so from here, all we have to do is simply go ahead and click on get started and we're going to start setting up our return postage and our payment. So once we get started, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and create our policy. We're going to do a payment policy first. I'm just going to put something generic. So general, I really don't need a description for this. And I'm always going to have this checked off require immediate payment when buyer uses buy it now. That's going to mean that the moment that the person clicks on buy it now, they're going to be required to submit payment. This is something that I always have because a lot of the times prior to this, somebody would hit buy it now, they wouldn't pay, and then it would show as if the listing was sold for like a week. And then I would realize they never did the sell, they never paid me. So at the end of the day, it was just a waste of time, waste of resources, waste of everything. So to avoid any complications or any issues, just go ahead and leave this checked. Now we're gonna click on save. And that's the first one. Number two, let's go ahead and do our return policy. So what's your return policy gonna be? My suggestion to you is always offer returns. If somebody sees that you don't offer returns, it's going to be kind of harder for them to actually decide to trust you and make a purchase from you, especially at the beginning when you're first starting out. So policy name, I'm just going to do 30 day. I'm going to allow domestic returns. It's going to be a 30 day return policy, and this is going to be up to you. Do you want the buyer to purchase the return postage or is it going to be free for the buyer and you cover it? I'm going to leave it to the buyer. So that's going to be up to them unless there's an issue with the product. So if they don't like it, they can go ahead and pay for the return. If they feel buyer's remorse, then they can go ahead and pay for the return. But if it was a product that was defective, if it had bad quality, or if there's a legitimate reason for why they don't need it anymore, then I'll cover the shipping for the return as well. Now, besides that, you also want to make sure that you're either accepting or denying the international returns. Now, I'm not going to be selling internationally. I mean, technically I am because I'm in the US and I'm selling in Australia, but I'm not going to be selling outside of Australia. So I'm just going to leave this as turned off. Let's go ahead and save. And last but not least, we go ahead and create our postage policy. Now our policy for this is just going to be general. Since we're going to be using AutoDS, AutoDS is actually going to go ahead and make these different policies for us as we're importing our different products based on the shipping settings that our suppliers have, which I'll show you this in a minute. It's actually going to be a lot easier, but we are going to need to have this set up. So let's just do this. Let's go ahead and do same cost to all buyers, the service. Let's do the eBay postage labels and just keep it at zero. So we're going to offer free shipping handling time. I do like to have a little bit more than usual because you never know what can happen with some of our suppliers. So to start, I'm just going to do three business days. And we're not going to apply domestic postage rates because we're going to be giving free shipping. So go ahead and click on save. And that's it. We're done with our payment policies. OK, so the next thing we're going to have to do is set up our payments. We're going to have to set up how we pay for things and how we get paid. Now, to do this, it's fairly easy. All we have to do is simply go back over to our eBay homepage, run over to the Good Day Mario and click on our account settings. Once we're on here, we're going to run over to the payment section under payment information. And then in my case, it's telling me that I need to set this up on the US site. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the link it's giving me and I'm going to add my account. Now for this, I'm just going to go ahead and choose the first option through checkout. I'm going to go ahead and include my PayPal information. All right. So now that we have everything set up in terms of our payments, now we can go ahead and start actually importing products to our store. So the first thing that we're going to do is since we are going to be implementing automation is create an account over at autods.com. Now, if you're not signed up just yet, or if you're on the fence about signing up, you can get started right now for just $1 for the next two weeks. In these two weeks, you can go ahead and hustle, add as many products as you can, and try to generate as many sales as you can. So that way, once your trial is up, you can just go ahead and opt in for the yearly plan or your monthly, whatever works best for you. Now, besides that, once you actually get signed up and you have everything ready to go, the first thing you're gonna see is gonna be this. This is the AutoDS Marketplace. On here, you're gonna to have tons of different products that are proven to sell. These are all really good products with a pretty good track record. Now, once we sign up and we have everything ready to go, the first thing that we're gonna to have to do is connect our store 
to our AutoDS account. And doing this is really easy. So up here, you're gonna see either add store or your store name. If you have a store already connected to it, you'll see your store. If not, you'll see add store. So what we're gonna do is simply click on this. Now I have multiple stores connected, but I'm just gonna go over and click on add store. And then I'm gonna add my eBay store. Go ahead and continue. Now our eBay target, where is it that we're dropshipping? Well, we're not gonna be dropshipping to the US, so I'm gonna be putting Australia. After this, just go ahead and click on finish. And then it's gonna take us back to our eBay website where we're gonna to have to verify once more and sign in. So let's just go ahead and sign in again. Now it's gonna ask you if you wanna grant access to AutoDS, just go ahead and agree. And we're good to go. Your store is now connected and ready for automation. Now up here, just make sure that your store is the one that's selected and no other ones. And now what we can do is start going through the different products that we have on our marketplace in order to start looking for what we wanna to import to our store. Now, my favorite section from this is gonna be the hand-picked product section. All of these different products are actually hand-picked. These are all cherry-picked by expert dropshippers with a particular criteria in mind. Not just that, but these are all also trending products and best sellers that have a proven track record in the last few months. So let's look through some of the different products and let's see if something stands out to us. So this one is actually one that's sticking out to me right now because personally, I have sold a few barbecue accessories myself on eBay. So this is gonna go perfect with what I've sold in the past. Now, once we click into the product itself, we're gonna see a lot of other information that can actually help us decide whether or not this product is worth selling. So you're gonna get an engagement score and a saturation score. The engagement score is gonna tell you how active this product is on social media and how much interaction it has. So how many people are actually interacting with the videos, commenting, liking, sharing, just overall interactions with ads. Now, besides that, you also have the saturation score. This is gonna tell you how saturated the market is with this product. So we can see that the engagement score is at 65. So it's actually very active. This is a very active product on TikTok and Instagram Reels. And the saturation score, it's actually just over busy, meaning that there is quite a few people selling it, but that doesn't mean that you should not try. It's not full market. And honestly, it's barely breaking into the busy. So you still have a long way to go before this becomes oversaturated. Now, not just that, you also have a lot of other information that can help you out with this. So you have a potential profit, which is gonna tell you more or less how much you can make. You have a few different ads that you can use to replicate. You can go ahead and take inspiration from these ads, or you can even download them yourself, edit them, add a few of your personal touches and then repost them. You have a few different competitors that you can take examples from, like let's say this one right here. It's gonna give you the actual website selling this product or one of the different websites selling this product. But this is if you're selling, let's say on Shopify, we're gonna be selling this on eBay, but we can still take examples in terms of the pricing. Now, if everything looks good, if this looks like a product that you think you can drop ship or something that can make you money, then all you have to do in order to import it to your store is just click on import draft. Now, I did forget to mention there's a few other variations. I mean, in this case, there's only one, but you do have this if there are more variations for some of the other products. But all we have to do now is simply just go ahead and click on import draft and it'll be imported into our draft section where we can make any necessary edits before having it go live on our store. Now, once the upload is finished to our draft, all we have to do is simply click over here where the draft section is and then we're gonna see it uploaded here. Now we're gonna click to edit, and on here we can go ahead and change everything that we need directly from the screen. So we can go ahead and change the title, we can change the category if we need to, we can change the different tags, or even the shipping methods. Now, as far as the shipping methods, my suggestion is always gonna be to keep it at the cheapest with tracking. If you do cheapest, you're not gonna get tracking. If you get fastest with tracking, it's gonna be very expensive. So cheapest with tracking is always gonna be your best bet. Now, you remember how I told you earlier when we were setting up our payment policies and our shipping policies, that some of these are gonna be set directly from AutoDS? Well, this is the option that's gonna set that for us. So one very important thing that we're gonna have to do is use dynamic policies. So I always check this off and then this is gonna be the default. Most of the times this is gonna be relevant or related to our suppliers, but it's always good to just take a look at it and make sure it's accurate. So here you can see that you're gonna have three business days in terms of the handling days. It's gonna ask you whether or not you wanna allow the global shipping program, which is simply just you sending it to an eBay warehouse and then that eBay warehouse sending it to wherever the order was placed around the world. It's also gonna be confirming the country location. So where's this product coming from? In this case, China. And then just a bit more information like the zip code and the brand, which you don't need to have this. 
Now, taking a quick look at our title, we can see that it's actually pretty long. So we would need to optimize it. We would need to shorten it in order to make it work for eBay. Now, lucky for us, we can actually use AI directly on the screen to get this done for us. So all we have to do is click on the optimize with AI button, and then we can choose a tone. We want to make it sound professional, sellable, funny, or optimize it for social networks. Since it's eBay, I'm just going to go for sellable and I'm going to AI write. So it's going to take what we already have in the description and it's going to rewrite it for us. So grill, brick, barbecue, scraper, stone cleaner, remove grease stains. Perfect. Short and straight to the point, right under what we need it to be, right under the 80 characters. Now, if we continue forward to our description, we can do the same thing here. We can actually optimize our description with AI as well. But if we don't want to do that, we can just go ahead and edit ourselves and change whatever we need. Under the variations tab, this is where you're going to set your pricing. And this is going to be probably the most efficient way to set your pricing. So if we click on edit over here, we're going to see that we're going to have a certain percentage for fees, a certain percentage for our profits. And the same thing goes for any dollar amounts. So what makes this so helpful is the fact that fees are going to be taken into consideration for your profits and for your selling price. This is going to take the guesswork out of everything. So typically we want to make sure that we're making at least two to two and a half times what the product is worth or what we're sourcing it for. Now, the fees, th this is going to be dependent on the product category and a lot of other factors. But on average, 13% is going to be pretty good for eBay. Could be between 13 to 18%, but 13% is typically pretty good. Now, our fee dollar amount, I like to keep that at zero. And our profit percentage, how much do we want to make? Let's say I want to make 60% profit on this. And our profit dollar amount, I'm going to keep that as zero as well. So as we can see, our total profit in this case is going to be two Australian dollars and 62 cents. Our selling price is going to be 1220 and our buy price is going to be 437. Now, if you didn't notice already, the profit plus the buy price is not going to equal the sell price. And that's because the fees are being taken into consideration in our profits. So the fees are already going to be deducted from our profits, meaning what we see up here, that's how much we're actually keeping. That's how much we're going to make. That's how much is going to be deposited to our account. Now, if you do want to increase this a little bit more, just go ahead and increase this to, let's say, 100%. Then you can see that our profit went up to 437. Our sell price went up to 1525. Our fees stayed at 13%, and it's still going to be deducted from our total profit. If you're happy with this, if this is what you want to go with, just go ahead and click on save and move on to the next tab where you have your images. On here, we can go ahead and add, delete, or even edit any images. And that's pretty much it. Once we're ready for this product to go live on our store, all we have to do is simply click on save and import, and it'll be imported to our eBay store. So once the product is imported, all we have to do is simply go over here where we have our product section, and we can see all of the different products that have been imported to our store. Now, right now, I just have this one. As you can see, it was successfully imported. And now if we run over to our eBay store, let's go ahead and look under my eBay selling sold. And here we can see that we have one active listing and it's going to be our barbecue grill brick. Now you can go ahead and do this for a lot of other products and really start building your inventory on eBay. There is another way that you can import more products and it's also super easy. So let's say that we want to import a product from AliExpress rather than the handpicked product section. Well, to do this, all we have to do is find a product Go ahead and take the link. Then we're going to run back over to our AutoDS dashboard. And this time what we're going to do is click on add products. Now we can either go to multiple products or single product. In this case, I'm going to do single. I'm just going to paste in the link there. We're going to see that the supplier source is AliExpress from China. And we can either publish it directly to our store, which I don't recommend because you do need to go ahead and update the pricing, make sure that you're making a profit. Or you can simply just click on edit now and it'll be imported to your draft section where you can then go ahead and just make any necessary additions or any edits. Now, when you do receive an order from eBay, then AutoDS is also going to go ahead and streamline that for you by fulfilling the entire order. So what's going to happen is the order is going to come through. AutoDS is going to go ahead and take those order details and it's going to submit the order with your supplier. Now, in order to do this, you are going to have to have the automatic orders or even better, the fulfilled by AutoDS service activated. Now, what the fulfilled by AutoDS service does, it actually lets you top up a balance over here that it'll use to make the purchases from your suppliers, whether that's from AliExpress, Amazon, the Handtrick product section or wherever else. Now, once you do go ahead and get an order, AutoDS will take it from the balance and pay for the order using that. Then once that order is shipped, you're going to see all of the status updates through here. This is the order screen on AutoDS. And as you can see, I have a few different ones that are delivered. 
and there was one that was an error this one was actually an issue because my supplier stopped selling it and i think it was right before the seller made a purchase so it wasn't able to update but it was not a big deal because i was able to switch the supplier but besides that you can see the order status through here whether it was canceled delivered shipped ordered or pending most of the times these are going to update themselves but you can also go in here and update everything manually now one of the most important questions that i keep getting over and over is how do you handle returns well honestly there's going to be a few different ways to handle this for one, you can handle it directly with your supplier. So you can go ahead and open up a ticket or reach out to your supplier whenever your customers want to do a return and then have your customer send it either directly to the supplier or send it to you who will then forward it to the supplier. Now, if you do that, it's going to be a lot more expensive because you're going to have to pay for shipping twice and it's going to take a lot longer. My suggestion would be to just have it sent directly to the supplier and then refund them the money or Honestly, just give them a refund and let them keep the product. Most of the times that's going to be the best solution because on top of everything, they'll be pretty happy with it and they'll give you a pretty positive rating. Not only that, but they'll feel a bit more inclined to be able to purchase from you in the future because they'll trust that you will give them a refund if anything does go wrong. Besides that, another thing that's very important to keep in mind is going to be the actual return policy for your supplier. So if your supplier doesn't accept returns, then that's going to be up to you whether or not to accept that return or not. Because at the end of the day, in this case, you are going to have to go ahead and bite that bullet and just take that hit for the payment or the refund. But luckily, most suppliers do accept refunds and exchanges, especially suppliers like Amazon. So you are going to have a return window where you are going to be able to return the product and get your money back as well as your customers. But honestly, to avoid any issues, what I do, because I don't really get that many returns, is just to simply let them keep the product and just give them a refund. It's honestly going to be the best thing for the customer because it's just going to make them the happiest. So that's pretty much everything that you need to know in order to get started dropshipping in Australia on eBay. What did you think of today's video? Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Remember, if you want access to the cheat sheet with everything that I talked about in this video, just go ahead and drop a comment with the hashtag eBay Australia. And let me know what your takeaway was from this video. Huge thank you to everyone for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. If you're still watching, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. My name is Mario with AutoDS, and I'll catch you all next time.